G'day, thought we'd look at something a little bit different today. Um, this is an Australian made bayonet and it was designed to suit the Australian designed to made Owen submachine gun. Um, that submachine gun was made in this country between 1941 and 1944 during the Second World War and it was a, a 9mm box fed submachine gun. I won't go into great detail on that weapon, um, there's information out there in there if you're interested in the actual weapon, but um, we're here to look at the bayonet. Um, at some point in around mid-1944, it was approved to, um, to design or manufacture a bayonet specifically for the Owen gun. I understand it didn't really get fitted during the war, but many of the Owens subsequently after the war were, um, were fitted to suit this particular bayonet. The decision was made to take the standard bayonet as used on the 303 um, short magazine Lee Enfield rifle, which was the standard battle rifle of the day, and um, basically just cut the blade down and have a shorter blade length. Um, the remainder of the knife handle, bayonet attachment, all that sort of thing was much the same. So what they do is they cut down to a 10 inch blade. Now that's a substantial reduction in fact because the standard bayonet on the, um, on the normal rifle, the blade length on that is a whopping 17 inches. Um, so it was known as a sword bayonet and rightly so. Um, I presume that was because back in the, um, the days of bolt action rifles Bayonet fighting was probably much more common. You wouldn't be able to cycle all around in the chamber and you probably wanted to try and keep the other guy at a distance. And if you had a short bayonet, presumably he could get to you and you wouldn't be able to get to him. Obviously, as times changed, trench warfare, etc. faded into the, into the memory. Um, that became less of a consideration until we see the shorter bayonets we have today. So this particular one, as I say, has got a 10 inch blade. Um, you can see there it's full runs around about half to about five, just over five inches long. I don't know what kind of steel it is, it would be a carbon steel of some description. Unfortunately in my younger days when I carried this around basically as a bush knife and knock around knife I did sharpen it up on the edge. That should all really be blued, which I gather doesn't do much for the value of them, having done that. Um, interesting enough, I believe now these are quite a um, difficult item to obtain, quite collectible, much more so than the four length ones because there just simply weren't as many of these made. This particular one I have um, was made in 1944. Now all the ones made during the war were made at Rifle Factory Number no. 3 in a town called Orange in New South Wales. And there's numerous marks all over this knife and indeed over the scabbard which I've um, learnt about and I'm just going to show you for as best we can. Now some of this will, won't show up, some are quite faint, but we'll just go through and look at some of the markings. I think it's really interesting all the different stamps and markings on, um, on military hardware of that era. Um, I had no idea just how extensive it was, but we'll just go through it on the Ricasso here down on the bottom, and I'll just throw a magnifying glass up and hope that'll show up. You probably see that down the bottom there's a large X and an OA, and above that there's a broad arrow. Now that broad arrow, as I understand, is from the government um, inspector, and when they basically accepted the, the particular blade or, or item into service. On the other side, we see up the top there, it's very faint, you'll see. Um, so like a 1, but above that there's a 1907, and that's basically um, recognising that it's descended from the 1907 pattern bayonet. Down the bottom of there, you can see an 11, that's for the 11th month, and the year 1944. So this particular bayonet was manufactured in November of 1944. There's some other marks on it, I knew those ones there, but in my research, um, I also found there's actually some markings on the woodwork. Now this, you may or may not be able to see this, but just between the two bolts there, very faint, you can just see some lettering. And what that says is SLAZ44. So that confirms that in 1944 that woodwork was made by the Slasinger Company um, in Sydney. They made all the woodwork for these. I had no idea that was there until I um, started researching to do this video, so that was really interesting. On the back, down below the mortise for the bayonet, there's yet another marking, OA, which I assume is some kind of acceptance marking. Uh, what else was there on this one? I think that might be just about it. So yeah, a lot of little stamps and markings I had no idea about, but it does confirm that I have got the genuine article. Um, on the sheaf itself, which is a, a leather bound steel type sheaf, this is a not period frog, I don't know that this frog on the sheaf was from World War II. Um, I picked it up subsequent, it's got some serviceman's number scribbled on the back. But of interest, and I'd actually never noticed this either, if we bring the magnifying glass up, you might just be able to see some letter in there. And it says Mangrovite 4-4. Now, again, the 4-4 stands for 1944, and all the leather for these things um, was stamped Mangravite because that was the name of the company, Mangravite Belting Proprietary Limited in Sydney, who supplied all the leather for the manufacture of these sheaves. 
So all the this item would have is a genuine item. That would have been the original sheath that came with this knife because they're dated the same year. So um, yeah, I just thought that was a little bit interesting to share. One of the things that I think is really great about YouTube is that we've got these odd things in our collections and maybe a little bit rare and we can actually um, share them with the world and fellow knife lovers a little bit. So um, I won't go on too long with that one. Let's see, we'll take it. interesting thing, it's really solidly built. One of the, the things I, sh I probably should mention is that to this day there's no rattle. Um, it's a very strong spring in that bayonet mechanism. I'll try and activate it there on camera for you to see it. Um, everything still works and the, the fit and finish actually, considering this is wartime production, I think they'll be churning these out. Um, very tight tolerances. Um, quite amazing workmanship on them. So, yeah, that is an Australian made Owen gun bayonet. My understanding is that when the Korean War came on, they put these 10 inch blades back into production. Um, I think they were being made at a different location by that point in time at the Australian Small Arms Factory. And they became the standard bayonet for the, um, the forward 303s um, into the Korean conflict. So that's the oldest knife in my collection. So 1944, so that makes it um, what, 65 odd years old, maybe no, 67. So I well, middle sit in my collection. And uh, who knows where it will go from there. Hope you enjoyed the video. Take care.